Perfect. So I'm James. Or I'm Thad. He's Thad. I'm James. Oops. Just uh, we let's are... be clear on that part. Yeah. <laughs> we are Vorpal Board. Uh, we don't make the games. We make them easier to play. Now, rightfully so. Some of you are probably sitting in the room going, what the heck are these jokers up here talking about board games for? Um, the, the reason for it is the board game world is a little different than it used to be. That's a feature. So on, on Kickstarter alone last year, uh, Tabletop War Game, that segment ran $165 million. It was the biggest segment on Kickstarter. Uh, it's an industry that is growing globally. They're talking about over $8 billion by 2021. The reason that this market is getting so big is a lot of people are playing a lot of things that are digital, whether they're on their cell phone, they're on their video game systems, they're on their computer. Their life is very digital. And the tactile nature of a board game is something refreshing, right? You're going back to an old school system, an old school way to play. And the market demographics are all very interesting. And this is something I didn't know anything about until I met James. The, the people that are playing these games are, are professionals. You have attorneys and stockbrokers and doctors getting together as a group. Instead of playing golf, instead of playing poker, they're getting together for a board game night. And the other thing that's interesting is the board games themselves, we're not talking just Monopoly and chess and Parcheesi. The board games themselves are a lot more complicated. There's a lot of strategy to the games. There's a lot of interaction of the group of people. There's a camaraderie that naturally happens with when you're playing these more advanced board games. $165 million, I mean, these things have to be interesting, right? And that 165, that's, to clarify, those are, those are new games. Those are new, innovative startup games, and there's thousands of them that have come out. You see these board game cafes hitting? It's a big industry. So when that many people are spending that much money on board games, what happens when everybody isn't in the room? And, and the roots of this, the history of this company are James experienced that. He moved from Wisconsin, came out here to New York. He didn't have a lot of friends, just had kids. Still wanted to play board games with his friends from back, back in Wisconsin. So he's a software engineer, started working on this platform. It was a little clunky at first. But now we've got a very streamlined system. We're launching on Kickstarter April 22nd. It lets you play absolutely any board game you have, from something like Monopoly all the way to Pandemic, or one of these more complicated board games. With that, I'll show you a little video that explains how the system works. We all wish we could play more board games, but it can be hard to get everyone together in person. If only there was a way for our online friends to join us at the table. Introducing Vorpal Board, the platform that makes it fun and easy to play all of your physical board games online with anyone in the world, using the actual pieces. Simply attach your smartphone to the table using the included mounting arm, set up the card scanning box, and launch the Vorpal Board web application in your browser. Your friends can see the entire game on their tablet, laptop, or PC, along with integrated video and audio chat for everyone who is playing. Using the Vorpal Board smartphone app, the game host can scan cards or tiles for any of the remote players that can then be added to their hand and kept secret. Remote players can zoom in on the board, roll dice, see each other's pointers, trade or play cards, and use counters just as if they were sitting at the table. Need to take a break? The Vorpal Board app will save your game right where you left off, so you can jump back in later. Don't let life or distance get in the way. Play the games you love with your friends anywhere, at any time, with Vorpal Board. It's your move. Thank you. So hopefully you enjoyed my, uh, my very inspired acting and my parents and my wife. Um, so the product was in an alpha state. We've been working on it for about 18 months. Um, so back in 2018, we were in an alpha, and, um, and then in, excuse me, in 2017. In 2018, I realized I'm a software guy, I don't know anything about product design, physical product design, and I needed to find somebody to help me. And so what I did is I reached out to the manufacturing incubator at the Tech Valley Center of Gravity in Troy, and went through, got a, a woo for the Tech Valley Center of Gravity. Um, I went through the manufacturing incubator, and I met Thad there, and we went from, Homemade, 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 homemade to uh, manufacturing ready prototype. Um, and this was four to six months. 
Um, and then we've moved now into a beta testing and customer discovery phase. So I went to board game conventions. I got a crew of um, beta testers in the uh, capital region and actually online as well. Um, and we did tons of interviews of gamers, of publishers, of influencers, um, and found out exactly what those folks needed and wanted. Um, Thad mentioned all the money that's raised in the board game space. This is an area that is very fluent in Kickstarters. They do a lot of Kickstarters. The board game industry knows if your Kickstarter is bogus. They know if you're just gonna go in there and have a smoke and mirrors type product. And so we've done a ton of work um, building credibility in the industry. Um, and that's really about aligning with existing publishers and influencers. Um, and that's been what the last four to six months have been. So to now, we've been bootstrapped pretty much the whole way, and that means getting all the Kickstarter assets built, building the software, building the prototypes, um, and uh, pretty much surrounding ourselves with an, an expert team. We have a slide on our team in a second. Um, and then we've been utilizing the support of the ecosystem in the capital region as much as we can um, for areas that we don't have expertise. The Kickstarter is on April 22nd, um, which is in uh, 12 days, I believe. And then if we fund, we will be doing the manufacturing at the, uh, at the COG in, uh, in Troy. The structure of the Kickstarter and uh, of the business as well, assumedly, is um, that you would have an upfront cost to buy the hardware, so the arm and the box, and then a subscription fee to be able to host games on the platform. Um, so we will have two tiers in which you could get into the Kickstarter. One is just with a year of the subscription for the hosts and the mounting arm for $75. And then the next tier is the box, the arm, and the year of the subscription for $125. Uh, there are a lot of games that don't require the scanning box. So we see um, tabletop role-playing uh, game players as well coming into this space. Uh, and they might need just the $75 option. So this is a little bit about our team. Um, obviously, me and Thad. Um, Mike Mady is a software architect that I've worked with for um, 15 years. Uh, the, the three of us kind of bring uh, decades of experience in corporate environments, in big corporate environments, uh, and we're applying that to this startup. So a lot of software practice, a lot of product design practice that comes from years and years in being in big companies and applying it to a, uh, a small company. Okay, so to wrap it up, our big ask for tonight. Um, we are launching on Kickstarter April 22nd. And in all seriousness, we need every backer we can get. Um, if you're don't, not familiar with Kickstarter, a $1 back actually helps us with the promotion of the product on Kickstarter. If we hit those numbers, they push us up further. So just even a $1 hit, if you go to vorpalboard.com, you can follow our newsletter. We'll go live on Kickstarter. The kind of people that are going to want to use this thing are, aren't just hardcore board gamers. If you're a family and you want to tie people in uh, remotely, you can do that. Um, it, grandparents, if you want to buy this for your grandkids. If you have a deployed military person and they want to play games with their kids remotely, that's an awesome option too. So hit us up on Kickstarter. Thank you very much. We'll take some questions. So the question is if uh, it works on PC as well as mobile devices. So the application that you see where people are actually playing the game, that's all on PCs or tablets. Um, you will need one mobile device at least to stream the board and one mobile device in the card scanner if you want to do card scanning. So for a hosted game, you would need two mobile devices currently. Other questions? Now, just, just to clarify, that was two devices for the game, not for each participant? That's exactly right. Yep, just for the host. Yep. The remote players are free. Um, that's one thing that might not have come across. Anybody who wants to play the game remotely, you don't need to pay a dime, right? So the, only the host is the one who has the subscription fees, and those remote players can connect in a browser, no software to download, nothing, um, and they run on PC or on a tablet. It's just an all browser-based software. That was really nice. Yeah. Do the, do the guests actually pay, do they actually pay a little bit too? I mean, it sounds like the host is going to really incur all the costs, but you know, just to say maybe not some of my 125 could be shared by my family and friends, could 
Is there a model that you guys are considering? Well, I do think that will happen a lot. So a lot of the gamers that I talk to say, okay, well, I have a crew that I play with regularly. We'll, it, this fee is easy for us because we'll spread it across six people, right? So, so we'll all pitch in. Um, and buy the hardware and pay the monthly fee or whatever. Um, so I think that will happen. We probably won't have it as a, as a way on Kickstarter to do it, um, but I do think that will happen out there, yeah, a lot.